Hey there, FakeFox here and in this video I will give you a summary of everything you need to know about the High Isle chapter and update 34 as a PvE healer. We will of course take a look at the new content, the Dreadsail Reef trial and the new sets. Apart from that we also have some changes to old equipment, class abilities and the champion point system. As a chapter, High Isle comes with a new 12 player trial. As we only get one trial per year and it's the most important PvE activity for many players, I want to say a few things about it. In my personal opinion, Dreadsail Reef is great. It uses pre-existing mechanics in new ways and also introduces many completely new ones for a really unique experience. The three main boss encounters all create interesting challenges with their distinct mechanics, mostly without relying on sensory overload to create difficulty. The trash also finally manages to be interesting and challenging outside of just punishing DPS checks. Only the two side bosses are a bit underwhelming in my opinion. I think Dreadsay Reef also is a quite enjoyable trial for healers specifically. The challenges are quite varied with different healing checks and a general focus on group coordination. In my opinion this is vastly more enjoyable to heal than trials that focus more on individual player movement and kiting mechanics like Rock Grove. I also really like Dreadsay Reef visually but that's even more subjective. You can see for yourself how the trial looks from the background footage. So let's continue with the new sets and potentially the second reason why you might want to play High Isle or Dreadsail Reef. The clear highlight here is Pillager's Prophet, the light armor support set from the Dreadsail Reef trial. Its 5 piece bonus gives the group ultimate points based on the ultimate points we spend. It stands out by affecting 11 players, making it quite good in trials. In 4 player groups it does fall significantly behind Drake's Rush though. Ultigen sets are difficult to compare to more straightforward damage modifiers, but Pillager's Prophet certainly has a lot of power. In my opinion it is an especially good option for more casual trial groups, as it is a very easy to use support set with a lot of general utility outside of just maximizing sustained DPS. More ultimate is always good, no matter what you use it for. But similar to Sexual Champion, its main competitor, Pillager's Prophet also has a lot of micromanagement potential for experienced healers with ulti gen builds. And one more thing to be aware of is its very short range of just 12 meters. The second support set, basically the tank set from Dreadsail Reef, is not as universally powerful, but it still might be interesting for some of you. Pearlescent Ward increases the weapon and spell damage for every group member alive and increases damage reduction instead for every dead group member. For high-end PvE this set might be pretty pointless. Specialized offensive support is just a lot more effective and the priority should be for players to not die in the first place instead of recovering from deaths. But for inexperienced support players the set is in my opinion pretty amazing. Being completely passive and persisting through death it is as easy to play as it gets. And its hybrid nature is really useful in unoptimized groups where the goal is just clearing the content by any means necessary and recovery does become important. Further the set scales to group size making it convenient for newer players that want to wear the same gear throughout different activities. And it has a permanent visual effect on the wearer which is also convenient for playing with pickup groups. The trial sets of course have a normal and a perfected version. The normal version drops from chests, quests and normal difficulty encounters and the perfected version drops from veteran and hard mode difficulty encounters. And then we have one more set that I think is worth talking about and that is Serpent's Disdain, a crafted set. It increases the duration of status effects by 16 seconds. This increases all damage and debuff effects applied by status effect procs to 20 seconds. So for example burning, minor vulnerability, minor brittle and so on. This isn't overly amazing as all these effects can be kept up permanently anyways, but I think the set can still be decent in some cases and is pretty much the only craftable support set, so it could be interesting for beginners. Continuing with the ability changes. Dragon Knight's Engulfing Flames was nerfed from a 10% damage increase to only 6%. 
So the two or three Dragon Knight healers out there now have a bit weaker support. But jokes aside, overall I don't think it is really relevant. Support is still plenty and not really the reason nobody plays the class as a healer. Also the duration of Major Mending from Fragmented Shield was slightly increased. Using the shield to keep up Major Mending does work decently well for AoE healing checks and this is a reasonable buff, but it also doesn't address the issues of DK Healer, so it won't change anything in the bigger picture I think. For Necromancer, both Shocking Siphon and Restoring Tether now give 150 Magicka, Stamina and Health Recovery, instead of just one flat resource. The Recovery stat is generally better for healers than flat resources because we can scale it really well. This already is what makes Necromancer's Sustain Passive so damn good. For those two abilities, the restored values should on average come out slightly over the old value for Magicka and slightly below for Stamina. But as it returns both resources now, the total values are significantly higher. Additionally, Ruinous Scythe always procs off balance and not just after three casts. This makes it a pretty good way for Necromancer healers to apply off balance, especially in trash fights but more on the relevance of off-balance later. Nightblade's Refreshing Path now gives minor endurance and intellect. Nightblade Healer has risen in popularity a lot recently, mostly due to optimal group compositions being changed by the hybrid scaling in patch 33. I think it is great that we see a significant buff to Nightblade support on top of that, so its power is more in line with its position in the meta and it's less a flavor of the month. For Warden, Corrupting Poland now also debuffs the minor cowardice to, quote, help it gain some viability in PvE areas. And yes, I think this morph is a real consideration now. If we have enough time and bar space to run an additional skill, we can simply use another hot to compensate for the healing loss and have permanent minor cowardice. So it should be helpful for more casual healers in particular, as they usually don't run complex builds and benefit more from defensive support. Further, the radius of expansive frost cloak was increased from 28 to 36 meters. If you ask me, the range was totally fine. But this of course makes the skill even easier to use for healers in kiting positions or with split up groups. And lastly, Deep Fisher now applies Minor Breach, so it can and probably should be used to replace Dragon's Defilement in Trash Encounters. That's all for the ability changes. The last topic for this video are the Champion Point changes. Most damage focused nodes of Warfare, the Blue Tree, have been rebalanced. The healing and support nodes are not affected. Two new nodes were also added, one that gives penetration and one that gives a damage bonus against off-balance targets. Builds that use healing and support nodes are of course not affected at all, but even for builds with damage nodes, the previous best and slot configurations should still remain optimal unless you lack penetration. But the more important changes for healers are actually indirect. Exploiter, the node that gives additional damage against off-balance targets, did already exist in the old champion point system and had a pretty large impact on group optimization. Basically, the decision to play Exploiter has to be made on a group level because the support players need to provide the off-balance for it to work. In its current form, Exploiter should be too weak in most situations. As off balance lasts 7 seconds with a 15 second cooldown and the node gives a 10% bonus, it's effectively only a 3% damage increase, which is weaker than many other options. This does however change in extremely short fights, so that's where we might see Exploiter being used. But groups at large should not optimize for Exploiter, at least for now. But it's something to keep an eye on. And with that, we are at the end of this video. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Bye.